Throughout American history, hardworking men and women rose above adversity to succeed. A society based on talent, effort, and achievement was unlike anything the world has ever seen and still makes America the land of opportunity today. But there is a certain move in this country now that is trying to say to some, you deserve to be given. No, you deserve to earn. You have the right to go out and test your mettle against anyone else's. In America, if you are willing to put forward some gumption, uh, you can achieve great things. So meritocracy doesn't mean you're the winner. It means you have the ability to compete in an open and fair environment. That's the essence of success in America, is that ability for all of us to jump into this arena, whatever it is, and do the best we can. Live honestly and honorably within the limits and to the limits of your own ability and give thanks to the men and women whose greater ability has made such a magnificent world possible for you. Ayn Rand. The American system is based on the idea that people through their own merit can earn success. That belief is at the heart of the American dream and made possible because of meritocracy. A meritocracy is something that grows out of freedom. They can have a life that suits their goals. It's the content of your character, not the color of your skin, not the packaging you're in, not whether you're female or male. Meritocracy means that you can achieve what you merit, what your capabilities are and what your talents allow and how willing you are to work and how well you are prepared. Meritocracy to me is the ability to get up in the morning and, and pursue a goal. I, as a kid, wanted to play professional football. I was reasonably good through eighth grade. I was pretty good in high school, but when I got to college, I was just nowhere, as, nowhere, nowhere near as good as the other kids that were recruited to play uh, Division I football. So I stepped back and played Division II football. I mention that because, yes, I wasn't good enough to play at a top-level Division I school, but I was good enough to play at a solid Division II school. Well, to me, that's part of meritocracy. It isn't that you have to be the best football player in the world. I learned an enormous amount through athletics. They were a great part of my education, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. It actually goes back to the basic definition of the American dream. And if we had a society where everyone was chasing their individual talents and developing those talents, we're all going to prosper because someone is going to be a great chef. Someone's going to be a great CEO. Someone wants to focus on raising a great family. If everyone focuses on what they can do and do best, we all benefit. The founders created a nation based on the radical idea that a person's beginnings did not define their future. But it has taken time for all Americans to be welcomed into that system. I don't think in America you have people wanting to tear down other people so much as just give me a chance to be a part of this process. The Civil Rights Movement was a fight for allowing everyone to be part of the meritocracy. I mean, a lot of the oppression of blacks and minorities and women in this country was a function of, of the people in power in the government preventing them from achieving their potential. Most waves of immigrants come in and they start at the bottom. And then you look at whether they are Jewish or they are Italian or they come from Nigeria or they're coming from China. But if they play in the system within a generation or two, you hear their kids are going to Harvard to become a doctor. I mean, isn't this the story when we're in a taxi cab half the time and you talk to the taxi cab driver? When we talk about work, we talk about uh, having honest, employment and going home tired that night and you know you can sleep comfortably because the dollar that you made that day was an honest dollar uh, that indeed builds the character of a future generation i think a fascinating study as you look back into the american military 
The American military had a tremendous problem with race coming out of the Vietnam War. And so the idea was we want to start promoting minorities into positions of officers and other leadership positions. So what the military did is it didn't lower the barrier. The barrier stayed. They helped people get coached up to overcome that barrier. And when that happened, it didn't matter what your race or creed was, when you became an officer, everyone knew you were qualified to be an officer. What we have to do is get rid of any roadblocks to people who are not doing so well, who want to. But you know, maybe you just want to go out in the fields and paint pictures of flowers, and that's fine too. The essence of a free society is a respect for the dignity of the individual. And that dignity is increased by having control over your own life, keeping the money you earn, sending your children to schools you decide they should go to, and pursuing goals in your life that you determined and somebody else didn't. Americans seek inspiration from admirable figures that have come before us. These role models show us a path forward and encourage us to build a better future. The benefit of a role model or a mentor is beyond compare. I saw in action a woman in a leadership role, the first woman in the country to be the majority leader of a state house or senate. That woman went on to be more famously known in the judiciary, Sandra Day O'Connor. And I got the privilege as an intern of watching her in action and seeing a great woman leader find someone who has the values and the character that you admire and follow that person, learn that person. Learn as much as you can about someone whose values reflect your own. So a really good example of an exceptional American is Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass was born a slave, so he has every reason to be resentful, to think that America has done nothing for him and that he owes her nothing. And Frederick Douglass actually leaves. He goes to Britain, but he returns and he fights for the American dream, for his fellow citizens to realize self-government and to be freed from slavery. And over time, he changes his mind. And he says that the Constitution, in its essence, was never anything but a pro-freedom document. And he realizes that it belongs to him as it belongs to all Americans. America is not a country that got successful because we uh, envied people's success. We got successful because we admired people's success. You know, I'm very friendly with Bernie Marcus, uh, who's the founder of uh, Home Depot. He was terminated uh, by Sandy Sigaloff, and uh, he called Ken Langone, very emotional. I have three children, a big mortgage, I have no income. And he got 40 families to put up $50,000 each, $2 million. The market value of Home Depot today is over $300 billion, and they have 3,000 employees that are worth over a million dollars because of the stock appreciation. And Bernie and Ken have been extremely philanthropical, giving away hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions of dollars, to charity. We admire that picture, and we encourage that picture. As a pilot, I also was a civilian advisor to the Secretary of Defense and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, back when it was Dick Cheney and Colin Powell. And at that time, Women were precluded from flying fighters or bombers. Women could fly tanker aircraft or transport aircraft, but not anything that could shoot back. I didn't think that was especially chivalrous. One admiral, who was the father of daughters, asked if I would be willing to train and do a flight. They tell me I was the first civilian woman to land in an F-18 on an aircraft carrier, but now women are routinely flying fighters and bombers and that is a career field open regularly to women in each of the services. Despite the success we've seen, the system of meritocracy has always been under threat. What would it look like if we ultimately abandoned these values? If we gave up our system of meritocracy, our country would look like Russia. It would look like China. You know, the wonderful thing about America is you can come from any socioeconomic group and you can rise to the top based on your own efforts. People criticize our, our system that it's too competitive, it's too this, it's too that, but the reality is no other system has proven to be better. 
And, and that's just a fact. You can have all kinds of theoretical discussions that people talk about, well, but if you tweak socialism this way, no, I, you know, the founding fathers, to their credit, were, were brilliant in their ability to see human nature, to see that people will make mistakes. Um, you know, they formed a government that could take people that are fallible and yet not allow them to destroy our country. It's an amazing system they put together, and we should be extremely careful when we change the basic institutions that they put in place because they've been time tested. Meritocracy has allowed for some of the greatest cultural and technological innovations in history. Today, it falls upon us to uphold the values of the American dream and to restore it to its full glory for ourselves and future generations.